Good morning all. My solar powered, well it was a dragonfly but um, both its wings fell off so it's now a sort of crazy flying worm um, and it's thrashing about because it's sunny today and it's actually going to be reasonably warm which is surprising because the solar panel itself is, and it keeps hitting the camera, is quite small relative to the size of the platform that's been allocated to it. So it must be a very powerful solar panel on here. Anyhow, weather like this makes me think, hmm, well it's time for the summer projects, the solar powered projects and all the outdoor stuff. So let's just have a little review of all the projects that I've got on the go, and there are quite a few, and uh, some of the changes that I'm planning to make to them this season. So the first project is the electric bike, and uh, this project is to replace the lead acid gel cells that are in this battery pack with lithium iron phosphate and I've made up one of the replacement packs here four 3.2 volt cells gives you uh, what 12.8 volts the other four cells are still in their box I haven't even uh, attached them together yet but that'll produce uh, nominally 25.6 volts now the bike was supplied with a simple charger for the lead acid packs. Um, I noticed a few months ago that that had failed, so I can't really charge this pack anymore. Now charging the uh, lithium ion phosphate cells, I'm going to do with this. It's the Turnergy AccuCell 8150 um, 8 cell charger, and it'll need a balanced charging lead, something like this, which plugs into the balance ports on the side of the AccuCell and then these wires will connect to all the various uh, cell connection points on this pack. Now this uh, battery pack has a fuse in it, I think it's up here, it's a 40 amp fuse but I thought since I'm going to have an interconnection between one of these sets of four cells and the other one I'd use this additional fuse simply to link the two blocks together um, so I've got uh, plenty of fuse, plenty of safety going on. So this is a solar powered bicycle because the uh, 80 watt solar panel is charging this lead acid battery through a PWM5 solar charge controller. And then the Turnergy, which is designed to run from 12 volts, is connected to that lead acid battery and that will be used to charge the lithium iron phosphate pack and then that runs the bicycle. Now when the bike has the lithium iron phosphate cells in this battery box it's very important that they can't over discharge so what I'm planning to do with that is that the balance charge lead will come out into this little transparent fronted box and in there will be this little um, it's a voltage monitoring, monitoring unit which can monitor up to eight cells. Uh, so it's ideal for my eight cell pack. It has these two very loud alarms. If any one of the cells drops below a presetable voltage, then the alarm will go off. That will be mounted uh, in this little transparent fronted box. And then I'm going to mount that box on the side of the battery pack like that. And then Unfortunately, it's going to be necessary to remove this unit because it draws power from cells 1 and 2, I believe, Dacian said. So I'll need to take the front off this box and, and actually physically disconnect this um, when I finish riding the bike. Now, this symbol under voltage alarm device um, is the sort of very basic undervolt protection to make sure I don't over discharge this battery pack. Later on I might start experimenting with these solar BMS's. Both of these are supposedly for lithium ion phosphate cells but uh, Dacian of Electrodacus says that these are not set very accurately and uh, you can easily overcharge and over discharge with these. So the ultimate uh, would be to attach this to the side of the battery box. This is uh, Electrodacus's SBMS 4080 solar battery management system and charge controller. Now next there are the three charge controller projects. The MPPT 
uh, test rig, which isn't quite a charge controller yet because it doesn't do battery voltage maintenance, but that's not far off. Uh, then there's the little Arduino based PWM charge controller, which is kind of working but has jitter, and I'm not sure there's any way around that jitter. Um, and in fact, I think I might leave this project where it is because it's really simple. It's got about 12 lines of code and it works. It's just a very simple solar charge controller, but I will be designing a new PCB for the uh, components uh, on the bottom here. And I'm probably going to do it in the same form factor as the Arduino Pro Mini, so they sandwich together. And then there's my original PWM5, which is PIC microcontroller based. And this year, I've decided I'm going to open source the code for the PWM5, so I'm going to publish it and so anyone can make one of these themselves. Uh, I seem to have a bit of a problem here. This connector is red hot, I think because it's all corroded and it's not making a very good connection. And the cover of my banana plug has gone all melty. Oh well, that's what happens when you leave stuff out in the garden over the winter. So I've hooked up the uh, solar MPPT project, uh, otherwise known as the Solar Muppet, and uh, I noticed last year that the inductor was going into discontinuous mode uh, even at 15 kilohertz. So it seemed to me that it's too small, and that's why I bought this much bigger ferrite core. I don't have the uh, thicker enameled copper wire that I want to use yet, so I'm going to have to uh, order some of that, but then hopefully that inductor will. Uh, be more, well, it will transfer power more effectively from the input side of this unit to the battery, which is on the output side. Now, one thing I'm not sure about is this decoy circuit. It's the uh, dual complementary opto isolator MOSFET driver. There are a couple of issues that I see. One is that it has LEDs which are lit. If I can uh, block the light, you'll see that they're lit. Now, that's fine when the battery is charging and when its voltage is being maintained, but at night it's not really justified because it uses energy. So what I was thinking is uh, having some sort of night detector, and the best way probably to do that would be to detect uh, voltage on the solar panel input, that thing that's currently saying 19 volts. If that drops below a volt or so, you could put this thing uh, project into a low power shutdown mode. These LEDs would turn off, that's fairly simple, you just set the output to an input that's driving them and uh, you go down into low energy the 15 kilohertz for the buck converter would be wound down to a lower frequency so I could overcome that the other problem is this 9 volt battery which is very impractical but there may be ways of generating the high voltage needed for this circuit uh, using a charge pump or something like that or do I simply go to an off-the-shelf MOSFET driver chip and get rid of the decoy circuit altogether now the next question is, is MPPT as a technology justified? There is clearly here extra expense in the electronics for some say about 30% uh, additional power. Of course you can spend the same amount of money on a 30% bigger solar panel. And Dacian uh, Electroduck has put up a good argument for not having MPPT because solar panels have a 25 year warranty they're likely to last 25 years without fault but is this electronic circuitry going to run for 25 years without fault and I'm particularly looking at the semiconductors and the capacitors here it's likely that this would have to have work done on it and of course that raises the cost I'll put a link to Dacian's video on this it's very interesting have a watch of that I'll put that in as a card and then I'm also going to put a link to another guy who's built an MPPT charge controller um, very similar to this actually um, and it's on instructables and uh, that's an alternative to this so I've got to be mindful of other solar charge controllers MPPT controllers that are out there um, as to how much more effort I put into this one and finally there's this the uh, high power solar garden light now I have to admit that I haven't really been using this throughout the winter and that's because I kind of got into a habit of using it in a certain way which the current setup doesn't really allow for. What I liked to do is have it come on when dusk fell 
Then I'd leave it on for a couple of hours and then I'd come out and switch it off because I wasn't very keen on leaving it on all night in case it annoyed the neighbours. So in fact what I'm planning to do, and you can see there I think that the uh, battery seems to be in good state of charge, all three lights are on, but I'm planning to change this charge controller for one that has a double digit LED display and a built in timer and it will do exactly what I want it to do which is to have the light come on at dusk, run for a couple of hours and then shut off for the rest of the night. So I've ordered that charge controller, when it arrives I'll fit it into this project and then this device will do what I wanted it to do. Now the other thing about using one of these charge controllers that has a timer is that um, to set the timer going it must have some sort of detector for how much uh, sunlight there is on the panel and so this, which is the daylight sensor, shouldn't be necessary if I use that type of charge controller. So it will have a double benefit. So with all those solar projects on the go and of course the constant temptation to go to the pound shop and buy stupid little things like this, I think there's going to be plenty going on this summer. Cheerio!